Crested Gecko. While a gecko that in my opinion is a very easy animal to take care of can be a little challenging for the new person just getting into reptiles. Which is why today I wanted to make a care guide for the Crested Gecko going over the five basic care topics. Those being enclosure size, heating and lighting, humidity, the diet of the Crested Gecko, and then finally what to fill the enclosure with so your Crested Gecko is happy in its new home. Stick around while we show you guys everything you need to know to care for the Crested Gecko. Let's get into it. Kicking things off, let's start with topic number one, which is going to be the enclosure size you wanna have for your crested gecko. Now, when it comes to the enclosure size for a crested gecko, we'll start with going from a baby to a full adult, like Cookie right here. Now, when it comes to a baby, personally, I like to keep crested geckos in a bit of a smaller enclosure. While it is amazing the piece of buys to give the crested gecko every size that it possibly want to use, when in reality, the best thing for a baby crested gecko is to have an enclosure where it can feel safe and secure while it grows into a full adult. So I always recommend something like a five gallon to six quart shoebox bin. I like using shoebox bins. They may not be the prettiest. However, they are a cheap alternative and again, a grow out enclosure, right? Your crested gecko isn't gonna stay this small forever. It, uh, it might not get this big. Cookie is a chungus and a unit of an animal. However, they won't stay that baby size forever. And instead of spending this money going from 20 or so dollars for a five gallon and then a 10 gallon, and then you get the full adult size, uh, just get a shoebox bin. They're like three bucks. It's gonna last you like six, 10 months, and then you'll need a new enclosure by then. However, as your gecko grows into an adult, it of course needs an adult enclosure. It's forever home. Now, when it comes to the crested gecko, I recommend nothing smaller than a 20 to 29 gallon tall, the tall aquarium. Now they have 20s that are like this and then 20s that are like this. You, you want the tall one. These are an arboreal gecko and they do like to hike, so that tall is going to be great. Some other added alternatives are of course going to be things like the Zoomed Exoterras, the 1818x24s, or potentially one from today's sponsor. And real quick guys, before we continue on with the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Zen Habitats. Zen Habitats is a company that makes custom made enclosures for your reptiles. These enclosures come in a variety of different sizes, starting as small as something like a 2 by 2 2x2 two two, all the way up to a 4x2x4. Four two four. But in my opinion, the best part about Zen Habitats is going to be the custom ability you have. See, with Zen Habitats, they have what they call extension kits, which means this 4x2x4 four two four and this 4x2x4 four two four can be combined and then making a 4x4x4. Four four four. The possibilities of different sizes are absolutely endless. I guess as long as your parameter is at least two feet. But other than that, I mean, you can make them as big as you want to go. You want a 20 by 10 by 12, go for it as long as you get the Zen Habitats. And really, I think the best selling point for Zen Habitats is going to be their fast shipping. Now, when you talk about other PVC companies or companies like Zen Habitats, you're going to be waiting for six weeks to, in some cases, seven months. I've waited for PVC enclosure for seven months. It's absolutely ridiculous. Not with Zen Habitats. And their in-stock items, you can expect to get that enclosure within the week. What more can I say? Fast shipping, great enclosures at a great price. If you guys want to check out some more information about Zen Habitats, I have my link right down there in the description. Your boy gets a small cutback if you do. I very much appreciate it. Let's get back into the video. Moving on, let's get into the next topic at hand, which is going to be topic number two, the heating and lighting requirements for your crested gecko. Put this up into part A and B. So part A, the heating requirements. Now, the good thing for you guys, especially your newbies when it comes to understanding reptile husbandry, crested geckos can do absolutely fine with room temp, those temperatures being somewhere around the 72 to 78 degree mark. Really don't need to put any substantial uh, heating source unless of course you're in a colder room. Uh, let's say your room at night, it drops below that like 60 degrees, you might wanna get some night heating for the animal to make sure that it stays in that warmth. However, you really don't actually need or it is not a necessity to have any sort of basking light for a crested gecko. Sitting over here, we love utilizing ambient heating. That is because it would cost me a hell of a lot more money if I were to put 75 heat lights lights on all of these geckos. So the room just stayed pretty hot over here. It's around 76 to 79 degrees for the most part. And the geckos absolutely love it. We've been doing this for uh, quite a long time now, over five years, I'd say, and we've never had any problem with our crested geckos doing it this way. Getting to the second part of this, which is going to be the lighting section. Now, when it comes to lighting, again, there really is no necessity. The big thing that you want to make sure you're doing is providing a day and night cycle for your crested gecko. So having it understand that during the day it is light out and then at night it's dark. This is easily done with just your overhead lights, making sure they are in some sort of enclosure, whether that be that Zen Habitats, whether it be the Exoterra or using 56 quart shoe buck spins that we use as well just something that has a clear thing that they can understand where it's daytime and when it's nighttime. Over while not a necessity, I always love when my pit keepers for my crested geckos utilize UVB. UVB is always a benefit for any animal. It doesn't matter. While not a necessity, it can be an added benefit. They're pretty cheap, like 40 bucks for one crested gecko yearly. I mean, I feel like you could do it. <laughs> 
She still thinks she's a finger gecko, but she's actually kind of heavy on my finger at this point. But moving on, let's get into the third topic at hand, which is going to be the humidity requirements you need for your crested gecko. Now, personally for me, I feel like this will be the hardest section when it comes to the crested gecko owner. When you need an animal that just needs something like a 20 tall or that Zen Habitat's cage, when you need an animal that doesn't really need heating, it can do fine in the ambient temperatures being that 72, 78 degrees. The hardest part is understanding the humidity gradients that you need for the animal. Let's get into that now. Now, crested geckos require a humidity gradient of somewhere around 60 to 80 percent humidity and when i say this i'm not saying you need to keep your crested gecko at 80 percent humidity or 73 percent humidity 24 7 for the entirety of the animal's life of course when we're talking about a gradient we're talking about a scale a thing that spikes up and then down kind of like a roller coaster you never want the humidity to go like this you'll run into problems eventually when you do that however you want it to dip up and then dip down kind of like a mountain valley hill hill yeah. In order to do this, the simplest way is to mist the enclosure that is going to spike the humidity up to somewhere around that 80% and then throughout the day that humidity is going to drop around that 60% and then at which point during the nighttime before the lights get shut off, you mist again, it spikes up and then down and then up and then down and y you get the gist. You do this for 15 to 20 years for the animal's life. When it comes to providing proper humidity, it can be a little difficult for the new keeper, which is why I actually made a video right here, I'll place a little card, going over the top five ways to best perfect humidity inside your reptile's enclosure. We won't get into a long thing, it'll make the video too long, make sure to check that video out if you have any problems or questions. Alright boys, I'm sorry for the interruption, I just want to talk a little bit real quick about the merch. If you're looking for a great way to support the channel while getting some absolutely badass merch, I mean just check this out, we got Cressy in the front, Toke in the back, absolutely incredible. But hey, if crested geckos don't float your boat, which I mean, how can they not? But not to worry, we have a bunch of other incredible designs going from geckos, other geckos, m m well, more geckos. I think there's a chameleon one. If you guys want some more information, the band is right down there. It really helps me out. It helps me keep doing all the full-time stuff that I've been doing, living my dream. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Let's get back to the video. Let's get into the next topic, which evidently is probably the, one of the easiest things to do for any reptile whatsoever. And that's going to be number four, the diet of the crested gecko. Now, when it comes to the diet, we have made this so easy that it, it's pretty much idiot proof. Anyone can feed a crested gecko because it's not like the usual animal. What I mean by that is that the animal is going to have a pre-made food. Companies like Rapashi and Pangea have dedicated a specific formula that is perfect for feeding the crested gecko. Pretty much a dehydrated powder that you then mix in with water. It makes this goopy little like ketchup consistency goo. The animal lops it up, they lick it, and they live. And that's honestly all you really have to do. While I do say that is really all you have to do, I mean, you can feed your crested gecko just crested gecko food and it'll be fine for the entirety of life. The thing is, these geckos actually really like hunting as well, which is why I always recommend adding a protein in there, some sort of insect, whether that be your roaches, uh, dubia, lobster, red runners, or some sort of cricket, anything like that. They'll get the animal's mental uh, hunting instinct going and make them eat. It's always a blast seeing like these goofy little quirky geckos and then all of a sudden you throw some crickets in there and they become like a reptilian killing machine going on a rampage trying to hunt these crickets. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a great mental stimulation and a great for the diet for the animal as well. Well, yes, the crested gecko food will be completely fine for the animal. Adding some crickets in there, some sort of insect will help boost the animal, make him grow faster and all in all make an animal happier. Alrighty boys and girls, we have the care almost figured out at this point. We've got the enclosure size, the heating and lighting, the humidity requirements, and then of course what to feed the animal. However, while we do not understand how big of an enclosure we need, we don't really know what to put in that enclosure. And that is going to bring us to the last topic of today's video, number five, what to fill the enclosure with. As we mentioned a little bit earlier, crested geckos are an arboreal gecko, which means they do like to climb, so you are going to want to utilize that inside of the enclosure. There are multiple different ways you can utilize that. Personally, the fan favorite seem to be some sort of cork bark or cork hides, uh, some branches however i always recommend just finding some in your local conservation area and then sanitizing them in any way shape or form you deem fit instead of go buying the 35 34.99 stick they find at the pet store at the end of the day they're both sticks one of them you get for free one of them you spend an absurd amount of money on for again a stick 
a great thing to put, of course, some sort of fake foliage or real foliage if you're adept. If when it comes to real plants, I always love using pothos. It's unkillable. You can do anything to pothos and it will always survive. However, if you don't have a green thumb like me, you don't even want to risk it with the pothos. Fake foliage works too. You can find these at usually any pet store. We have a variety of different options. Basically, the two things you're going to want for the animals to make sure that it's able to climb and feel secure. Have a little bit of a hiding place, which is why you can put that foliage somewhere where it can feel safe and secure in its home. The substrate for the animal just needs to be some sort of tropical mix whether that be the cypress mulch topsoil the dirt daddy mix which is absolutely awesome check them out dirt daddy on instagram there's a multitude of different things you can use just as long as it's a tropical substrate that is going to be help retain the humidity for the tropical gecko there you got it boys and girls now you know how to take care of the crested gecko but if you guys want to learn some more stuff about crested geckos i have a playlist right here that goes over like 50 videos on the crested gecko or maybe this video right here will help explain a little bit further on crested gecko care as always if you made it this far a like and subscribe is truly appreciated. It really helps out the growth of the channel. Thank you guys so much for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. I will see you guys next time, but until then, goodbye.